Welcome to the OnlyFans Secrets Marketing Podcast. The goal of this podcast is to help both new and established OnlyFans creators learn the basics of online branding, marketing, and promotion to help you make more money with your content and maximize your time online. My name is Richard Lewis, and I have over 20 years of internet marketing experience. So let's get started with today's topic. And that topic is, can anyone succeed on OnlyFans? In this episode, I'm going to discuss the hard facts that most people will not succeed on OnlyFans. Uh, Being in this market space for over a year, I have seen many creators come and go. So in this episode, we'll discuss why that is and how you can avoid it. So in life, I would say there are starters, walk ones those who get cut, and those who don't make the team. Uh, simply put, if you've ever tried out for any team of any kind, you know how this goes. So I'm going to lay out how each uh, can succeed or fail as an analogy to your OnlyFans success. And then afterwards, I will go over reasons why uh, people might not succeed on the platform. Okay, so first we're going to go over starters. So these are people with natural advantages. This could be looks, uh, money, status, great health, uh, a healthy body, uh, intelligence, acumen, etc. So these are people that when they try out for a team, they either were, you know, maybe sought after from the coaches to begin with. Uh, if you're, you know, in a major league, then they would be drafted or recruited. You know, these are people who just naturally have the talents. So, you know, due to this, they are used to everything being handed to them in many cases. So, If you're listening to this and you're someone who people have always said, you know, naturally good things about your looks or your body or something, and so you say, okay, well, I need to go get myself an OnlyFans page, then at that point, you're kind of thinking to yourself, okay, this is going to be pretty easy, just like everything else that I've, you know, tackled before. But, you know, as a starter, you have a hard time with adversity setbacks, injuries, because things have been handed to you in the past. So what you have to do is you have to fight against this. You you know, don't envision yourself as special. You know, build on your natural gifts, but look at yourself as coming on to something like OnlyFans at an even playing field. You know, so basically you have to say, okay, yes, I do have some of these advantages, but I now have to work just as hard as everyone else. And when you have setbacks or adversity, you want to say, okay, well, that just comes along with business. That's just what happens. Sometimes things, you know, go well, sometimes they don't. So definitely if you're coming at OnlyFans from that starter mentality, you know, you have to watch yourself because you're not going to succeed on the platform if you take those advantages and say, okay, this is going to make me automatically successful on OnlyFans. And definitely had a podcast talking about why being hot or having good looks doesn't lead to automatic success on the platform. So definitely check that episode out as well. Okay, so your second group is walk-ons. Okay, these are people who aren't, you know, chosen or drafted, but stick around hoping for a spot. So in life and in business, the walk-ons, they are hungry men and women, you know, who are standing, you know, in front of a buffet all day, but they can't eat it. They can't eat anything at the buffet. So you can imagine if that, you know, was real and you were hungry and you wanted something, it's right there and you know you have to work for it. 
so that eventually you can step up and get to be there at the buffet and eat everything you want. So you can imagine that these people are going to be striving and working harder. So no one gives them a chance. So they give themselves a chance. As we went over with the uh, podcast about Madam C.J. Walker, that was her quote. No one gave me a chance, so I gave myself a chance. So these people, they study, they learn, they watch the starters. You know, they watch them for flaws, any openings in the way they play the game that can get them in. So if you're someone who, you know, wants to succeed on OnlyFans and you're more of a walk-on, maybe you were not someone who was doing a lot of modeling, you know, in in college or high school, uh, and now you're, you know, putting yourself out there, you're going to be more hungry than necessarily anyone else. So you've put yourself in the game. You've given yourself that shot. So I would say of of the groups that I'm talking about today, the walk-ons are the people who are most likely to succeed on a platform like OnlyFans because they come at it from that hungry perspective and they look at all the opportunity that's there. They don't look at the negatives, they look at the positives. So walk-ons are going to do very well and continue to do well on OnlyFans. Okay, so next group is those who get cut from, you know, the team. You know, people who were almost good enough to succeed, you know, but gave up or were given up on. You know, these are the type of OnlyFans creators who give up too soon, who might set high expectations too high or didn't realize how hard it would be to begin with. So, these are your types of creators who come in, they think that they're going to make the team, they think that it's going to be pretty easy, and then they get cut. Now, the big thing is, is that, you know, when you get cut, you can take, you know, it two ways. I need to go and I need to improve myself, or I'm a giant failure. And a lot of people, what happens is, is they say, I'm a giant failure, and they don't continue to work hard or they don't come back. You know, this is these are people who might have, you know, a niche that didn't succeed or the way that they presented themselves didn't succeed on OnlyFans. So they just assume anything that they're going to do on OnlyFans is not going to be successful. You want to go ahead and try to take that mentality out. Like if you're someone right now who feels like you're on the edge of getting cut, so to speak, you know, from the platform where you're not, you know, meeting your expectations or doing what you think you should be doing, then this is an opportunity to look at it and say, okay, I could get cut because I'm not, you know, succeeding like I want, but are my expectations too high? Did I expect this to be a cakewalk? Did I expect this to walk right in and, you know, be an all-star, move right in the top five, 1%. So you want to look at it that way. And in, in that way, you will be able to, you know, get new perspective and say, okay, I was cut, but maybe I could come back and I can still succeed here. And then you have those who don't make the team. So people who tried at something, but, you know, failed, they, they learn. So these are people, you know, from the very beginning. So they didn't even get into like, say the practice squad, you know, they didn't get anywhere. You know, they tried out, the person said, you know, nope, you didn't make the team. Bye. Uh, so this is basically, you know, no success, but here's the thing. They tried, they learned along the way and they have the opportunity to come back next time. So they're not like right there at the edge, like the people who got cut. Because the people who got cut were there playing with the starters, were there thinking that they were going to succeed, but didn't, you know, and that's, that's different. So when you just don't even get to go out onto the field anymore, you try out and they say, no, maybe come back next year. Now you're hungry again, similar to the walk ons and you say, okay, well, I'm going to go and improve myself and make myself better for the team. And then possibly I can make it to the point of possibly getting cut or becoming, you know, a starter. So it's, it's a little different 
And, you know, for those people, that opportunity, they say, okay, this is, a, this is a way for me to improve upon myself. So one group I did not mention before uh, would be those who never try at all. So I would say, you know, for those who have started an OnlyFans page or on OnlyFans right now, you've tried. Uh, so you're halfway to your, your success already. You know, for a lot of people, they talk a lot about starting something, they talk a lot about doing something, and they don't do it. So the fact that you're already there is halfway to your goal, really. And if you just continue to improve yourself, then you'll see success on the platform. Okay, so why doesn't everyone succeed at OnlyFans? So here's 10 reasons. So number one would be unrealistic expectations. You go in thinking, okay, this is the marker for success. You know, if, if I'm not reaching the top 1% within two months or the top 5% within a month, then I've failed. Uh, or I expect right away for everyone who I know, who I've mentioned my OnlyFans to, to immediately sign up and subscribe. And this is going to you know, uh, change my life right away. And I'm going to be able to quit my, you know, second job or even my main job, uh, or I'll have extra income and be able to take a vacation this year. Basically setting yourself up for failure. Uh, because remember success is what it means to you. So, you know, it success to certain people, success to Elon Musk is different than success for the rest of us. For instance, you know, uh, if he has one rocket that goes up and fails, he could consider himself a failure. If we had any amount of money to send one rocket up, we'd be super excited about that. So you have to remember that, like, success is, you know, your own construct. So we want to, from the very beginning, set realistic expectations of your success and set markers along the way that will allow you to feel like you are moving along or at least recognize that you are. And yes, you're going to have setbacks and you should be able to see those as well. So setting yourself up with markers of a pro, you know, progress along the way is what you want to be doing. And when you set yourself up at the beginning and say, okay, I'm going to succeed at this level and you don't, it just creates conflict within you and makes you want to no longer, you know, continue doing OnlyFans. And that's not good. Okay, so number two would be lack of daily motivation. So for a lot of people, you get up, you have a lot to do, you have maybe a job to do, you might have children to take care of, pets to take care of. Life comes along and you leave OnlyFans to the very end of your day, you know, where this little tiny period of time. And so eventually that little period of time becomes no time. What you have to really do is you have to give yourself daily motivation to get your work done. And as I've gone over before in the podcast, finding ways to make it fun is really how you're going to succeed. There are little tasks that you don't want to do, but if you are presenting yourself out to the world on, you know, what you like to do, for instance, like you will want to do more of that. So when you set up your niche and you set up who you are, out to the broader internet, the broader world, make sure it's who you want it to be. Because if it's not who you want it to be, it's going to be very hard for you to be motivated to get up every day and do that. You know, if you're telling people, you know, I'm a baseball star, but you love playing soccer and you're just really good at baseball, which one really are you, should you focus on? You should focus on soccer. No matter how good you are at baseball, if you really love soccer, it's going to show and people are going to say, okay, this is someone I want to, you know, be, be around, subscribe to, follow because they're so passionate about it. It's, it's not skill, it's passion. So, you know, your daily motivation is very important and having it. So if you lack that daily motivation, you're unlikely to succeed uh, at OnlyFans. All right, number three unwillingness to change, learn, and adapt. 